Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video here. Hope you're having a great one. Guys, we've got some absolutely enormous Tesla updates today. One of them deals with the Cybertruck and another one later on deals with a huge piece of news that Elon Musk has actually been hinting at for a while. So seriously, make sure that you watch everything. I've pretty much found the largest updates for the day. Anything that's kind of boring or just not worth noting, we're not even going to talk about about because why would we right <laughs> anyway let's start out here with a giant update for a giant giant vehicle now of course we're talking no surprise here at all okay about the cyber truck and here's the thing Tesla has now actually brought back its referral credit system. Now, this is really kind of something that Tesla has done on and off over the years, but now the Cybertruck for 500 credits exists in the form of a raffle. So it's kind of like on there, also like not. It is a raffle, so it's a slightly different sort of outlook and a slightly different approach uh, to that sort of uh, referral system, right, that Tesla is, is, is pretty well known for. But at the same time, yeah, it is great to see that that vehicle is still making an appearance. It's not something that Tesla's forgotten about, which uh, we know that just the other day, Elon Musk, uh, apparently, you know, that's the rumor, he was driving one around and it got stuck in the mud, which, yeah, vehicles get stuck all the time. It's nothing out of the ordinary, doesn't mean the truck is uh, not gonna work or anything like that. But yeah, I think this is a great sign of all the progress that's actually being made. I think it does a great deal to show us that the factories are really spinning up and preparing for a more serious production run. Uh, now, with it being possibly, you know, a limited number of trucks that are being raffled off, I don't know if we're actually looking at specific numbers here. Uh, I would guess it's, it's probably going to be a relatively limited thing. Uh, it says on the website, enter for your chance at a free Cybertruck. One winner will be selected at random to receive one of the first uh, Cybertrucks available. I'm paraphrasing the last part slightly there. But uh, yeah, I mean, that that's still pretty straightforward. It kind of does get the point across that this is going to be a limited thing. So anyway, I want to go ahead and point that out. Uh, I think it's a great sign of things to come with that truck, and I think it's a sign that really there are a lot of improvements being made. Anyway, let's move on now to everyone's lifestyle truck, everyone's favorite lifestyle truck. Now, we're going to talk about something here for the Rivian R1T, which obviously on screen, this is not a Rivian. I need to ask uh, my, uh, my, my editor about why that's not a Rivian. But anyway, we're going to talk about tonneau covers. Now, tonneau covers... It's pretty much what you're seeing here on screen, uh, except kind of also not. Man, I really got to talk to him about getting the right images for this. Anyway, uh, pretend that we're looking at a Rivian R1T. What we're seeing is Rivian is now rolling out a manual and powered tonneau cover. A tonneau cover is what covers the bed of the truck, which is really pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to spend too long uh, talking about that. And Rivian is also now introducing a bike pad uh, for the back of its truck bed. Now, again, uh, I kind of feel like Rivian is more of a lifestyle truck. I know we've talked about this before, more for uh, the weekend warriors out there that want to get out there and do kayaking or biking or, you know, what have you. Uh, they probably aren't going to use this for work or for contract work or anything like that. Uh, but it still is kind of interesting. Does this mean that, again, Rivian is pushing up and they're going to suddenly, you know, shove all of the competition out of the way? No, <laughs> I would say it doesn't. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I think Rivian's kind of doing the right thing by offering more accessories, but it's really nothing that third parties also can't take care of. So, yeah, it's fine, but it's also not really that exciting. Let's move on to something now that is a little bit exciting, and I gotta admit, I'm kind of looking at this from a certain angle, which I'll explain in just a second, but let's move on and let's talk about VW. Yes, we're talking about VW. Now, this is something that I think, again, does relate back to Tesla. But we are now hearing that Volkswagen, uh, VW, Volkswagen, you know, however you want to say it, uh, is actually now looking at selling an electric vehicle for $27,000 uh, or 25,000 euros would be the price tag for this. And they are looking at further widespread electrification, right? Actually getting that market a bit more saturated with their smaller models that are not as expensive. Now, 
I'm gonna be totally honest with all of you. VW, I think, has been really pushing for electric vehicles to be more of their lineup, to be a larger, more significant part of that lineup. At the same time, it's not easy. You know, you don't just snap your fingers and suddenly you've got a new model out there that can be sold for this small sum of money. If I had to guess, I would think that VW might possibly make this and then it would have markups, which we've seen far too many times, let's be quite honest or it would just be a higher price after it's actually made. Again, we really don't know for the time being. I think that a small VW platform that is electric could make sense. I think that also this kind of competition, which again, we do kind of have to ask, would it really be that serious of competition? Is VW gonna be able to deliver something like this? But if they do, I think that could further encourage Elon Musk and Tesla to get a vehicle out there that would be, again, highly competitive with this sort of model and in this segment, uh, the smaller sort of crossover segment. Uh, this is sort of like an electric beetle uh, type uh, concept. But anyway, with that said, let's move on to another update now. And this one, I think, is pretty interesting. Now, <laughs> it's something we've talked about for so, so, so long. It literally goes in cycles, right? We hear updates about this, and then they're kind of walked back a little bit. Then we hear more updates, and then they're walked back, and it goes on and on and on. Now Pete Buttigieg uh, is actually talking about Tesla's autopilot needing to be renamed because it needs human supervision. Now, this, again, really comes down to that sort of topic of, oh, well, is Autopilot the right name? Is this what it should be called or should it be called something else? And a lot of people feel a lot of different ways about this. I think that, however, it's pretty obvious that this requires supervision, right? And again, Autopilot here, what we're talking about, it's not the same thing as full self-driving. And that's much more of a beta-oriented uh, kind of experience, right? Getting those software updates out there, improving things over time. Autopilot has kind of moved away from that to a certain extent. So again, I wish that's something that would be reevaluated a little bit more. I think that unfortunately, a lot of politicians tend to kind of overlook this stuff and they just start working on things sometimes a little bit too blindly. Uh, but anyway, let's not talk about that for too long. It's not the most thrilling update, but it is something I wanted to bring up. What do you guys think about that? Let's move on now to a huge update for Twitter. Because now, as of yesterday evening, Elon Musk has confirmed that Twitter is getting a new CEO. Now, the whole Twitter event thing, takeover, it actually, I think, went relatively smoothly because people were talking about it for quite a while and then things really majorly quieted down. People kind of stopped talking about it as much because realistically, things didn't really change. A lot of people were worried that suddenly things were going to be all over the place. Uh, it was going to be very confusing. And really, that's just not what we ended up seeing. Uh, it's sort of like, you know, this kind of thing has been done before, right? And that a certain someone has a lot of experience with buying companies. Uh, again, I think that that kind of goes without saying, but some people seemed to forget that. So Elon Musk will be hiring, or actually has already hired, quick correction there, a new CEO for Twitter. And uh, it's a woman. That's That's fantastic also. You know, again... I think mainly because so many people criticize him from that sort of front as well. You know, I think that honestly, uh, it, I'm not overly concerned about who's hired as long as they do a good job. But I think that this probably will get some people to be a little bit quieter about uh, things that we've discussed before. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, I do think it's kind of a good step forward. Uh, so Musk brought this up on Twitter and said, excited to announce that I've hired a new CEO for X slash Twitter. She will be starting in six weeks. My role will transition to being exec chair and CTO, overseeing product, software, and sysops. Okay, so anyway, a system operations uh, but with that said, yeah, I think that, again, that's good. And this is kind of what a lot of people speculated about a while ago, that the company would be bought up, some changes would be made, things would be kind of consolidated and redirected, and then Musk would kind of take a back seat and let the company run itself more so how it used to be, which, again, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Now let's move on and let's talk about something that for electric vehicles 
could arguably have a larger impact than possibly anything else. Now, this is something that will not be instantaneous. I think this will take some time to be felt, and I think it's something that's not going to be immediate by any stretch of the imagination. But we do know that now a number of companies are starting to really compete with electric vehicle pricing. Okay, And by that, I mean price reductions, especially in April, were really pretty solid across the board. Now we are seeing that a number of companies are starting to push in this direction, and a lot of that is being led by, well, no surprise, the company that makes the most electric vehicles. Now, price reduction plus tax credits, which tax credits, uh, they come and go, so again, it's not really something we're going to obsess over too much, but it's a good winning combination to get more vehicles out there for further market saturation, and I think that overall it's a good thing for the consumer for that reason really not something I'm too bothered about, and I think it's a good sign of things to continue happening in the future in terms of more competitive pricing. Anyway, let's move on now to an update for... Wait, I've got another update for Rivian today? Really? What is this, Rivian news? No, I'm kidding. But anyway, now the CEO of Rivian, RJ Scaringe, 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 I apologize if I don't know how exactly to say that. Uh, one of you in the comments can go ahead and correct me. But RJ Scaringe has now confirmed that the pricing for Rivian vehicles isn't going anywhere. Now, Rivian vehicles are pretty expensive. I don't think that that's really any surprise at all. They've kind of been expensive from the beginning. And, you know, you could look at the Model S back in the day and you could say, well, that was expensive too. What are you talking about? That was still pretty pricey. And yeah, it it was. I mean, it, yeah, that's undeniable. But at the same time, RJ Scaringe or RJ Scaringe is now talking about wanting to keep the pricing for Rivian at about the same high price point that they've done before, okay? They're really working on having fewer sales that are more expensive. And I kind of can't help but wonder, is this going to be sustainable long term? When you're in that very, very premium price category, uh, you've got just so much competition. And you're starting to see a lot of people where they're going to be looking at the fact that the Rivian R1T is electric or the R1S, whatever you want to talk about, and they're going to say, well, that's great, but I'm looking just kind of generally at this price point. And for that price point, uh, you know, we're talking, again, tens and tens of thousands of dollars. You've got a lot of companies out there that have a, a, a very, very good track record, right? Uh, a lot of people don't really want that kind of startup vibe from the vehicle that they're or for the vehicle that they're purchasing. So yeah, is Rivian going to be kind of adhering more to uh, more expensive purchases and probably more expensive customers to a certain extent? That does seem to be the plan. Do I think that that's the best idea? To be quite honest, I, I really don't. I don't think that's the right move. And yeah, you could say, well, Tesla started expensive with the Model S. That's true. But at the same time, they eventually transitioned down into the Model 3 and Model Y and uh, really got some great value there in the market. So that's something that more companies need to do. If they don't, it's going to be very tough. And it's going to be hard, especially if the market shifts a little bit more. Uh, if Rivian maybe can't get its hands on as much capital as they need, that's, that's going to be a tough time. Uh, anyway, that's enough about that subject. We've talked about Rivian enough today. Let's move on to an update again for Tesla. Now, I want to say right now, Tesla is thinking, and it's not something I'm necessarily thrilled about, but I want to talk about it anyway, about no longer delivering certain vehicles in right-hand drive markets. Now, we're seeing sort of a cancellation for this right now, but at the same time, I don't necessarily know if this is going to be incredibly widespread or if it's going to affect absolutely everything. I think that realistically what we're seeing is a sort of market consolidation that right now it kind of is smart, right? Uh, now, anyway, this is referring to Model S and Model X vehicles actually not being shipped to Australia and other right-hand drive markets. 
Um, again, I don't necessarily love this because I want all markets to get a good amount of vehicles actually available in them. So if you're not seeing right-hand drive for right-hand drive markets, well, that's kind of a concern. Uh, anyway, let's move on to another update also, and let's talk about a new vehicle, okay, from Honda. Honda has unveiled the ENY1. Yes, that is actually what it's called. It's a new electric SUV, and this is not the image of it on screen, but this does look relatively similar. It's more of a concept. Let's just say right now, I'm just kind of underwhelmed. Again, I see an SUV, and I really see a crossover. You know, again, the Kia EV6, I think that's what it's called. That's being marketed as an SUV. This is not, we're not talking about the EV6 here, but it's just an example. And it's it's really not very large. It's not very high off the ground. Another SUV from Honda. Yeah, great, I guess. It's really more of a crossover. But uh, yeah, I just don't see this being all that earth shattering. And, uh, you know, again, it, it's kind of not really that exciting. So let's move on. And let's talk about something else. Let's talk about pricing updates. Now, didn't we just talk about prices being dropped for Tesla vehicles? Yeah, we, we, we did. But now two of them have seen a price increase. The price for the Model Y has been raised by $250. The price for the Model S and X has been raised by $1,000. Now, again, this really is not that wild. This is for the United States. And I gotta say, the prices are still pretty competitive. I mean, yeah, they're still a little pricey, but we also have to remember that there are now a lot of tax credits that are available as well. Uh, tax credits of $3,700 up to $7,500 for certain models. Uh, really, that does kind of provide a bit more of an incentive, and it, it gets the prices to be pretty competitive. Um, I know some people might look at this and say, well, those are high prices. Well, yeah, I mean, but a lot of cars now are just very expensive. It's just kind of how they are. I wish that they weren't, but it's just how things go. Let's move on to something that I thought we were done talking about. I thought we were done talking about SPACs. A special Purpose Acquisition Company, if I'm remembering correctly, that's what that stands for. But yeah, we're now seeing that VinFast Auto, okay, I believe VinFast is, uh, yeah, v Vietnam-based, if I'm remembering correctly. They're now going to be working on a new SPAC for uh, Black Spade Acquisition Company. Uh, that's essentially what they're looking at there. Uh, they're, they're working on uh, VinFast Auto uh, being formed in combination with that acquisition company, and they're looking for an IPO uh, for the U.S. in the next couple of years. Now, again... I hate talking about SPACs because, first of all, they were very, very common for a while there. And they're also just kind of like a bunch of technical jargon. So, essentially, VinFast, they'll probably be working on more electric vehicles. But SPACs, I think a lot of people are pretty tired of them. Let's move on to an update now also for NEO. The car company NEO is now planning on potentially adding solid-state batteries to their EVs. Now, NEO has actually been doing pretty well with batteries and production in general. Solid-state batteries for a lot of companies that aren't Tesla, I think that they're fine, but I think that, again, they probably are a ways away. Now, let's move ahead. M move ahead? What am I saying? Let's move ahead and talk about an update for Tesla and for electric vehicle prices. We've talked about this a little bit already today. But let's talk a bit further about electric vehicle pricing. It seems like electric vehicle pricing competition is now majorly increasing. And that seems to really be indicating that in the near future, we could realistically be looking at a serious change for EV pricing in general. And I think a lot of this is going to be led by Tesla, but I digress. Let's move on to an update now that you are not going to want to miss. And let's talk about full self driving and related features now this is going to be an integral part i think of tesla's business moving forward and it is something that lately i think a lot of people have been thinking about quite a bit 
Uh, I know that parking in cities has been a little bit more stressful lately, uh, with a lot of people returning to offices and starting to work in person more again. And this is a feature that is going to be game changing, okay? It's also a feature that we've seen uh, kind of in the pipeline for a while. And that's really not an exaggeration. It has been under development for quite a long time. Now, Elon Musk has confirmed that there is a big update on the way for Smart Summon. And beyond that, Reverse Summon, right? So essentially the car being able to, well, unpark itself and uh, drive to your location. So in terms of self-parking and the vehicle actually moving to you when you need it to, it appears as though there's a giant update for that right on the horizon, which is honestly super exciting. And I think it's something that more people really need to start thinking about because I think it could be a huge product portfolio for Tesla that so far really hasn't seen a lot of attention. So anyway, Elon Musk tweeted just a bit ago, replying to Hol uh, Holmar's blog, pardon me, and said, as mentioned earlier, V11.4.1 has major architectural improvements. It's actually much more than a point release. Should arguably be V12.0, but that's reserved for when FSD is fully AI from video in to control out. So again, talking about full self-driving and another substantial update that is on the way. Now, Tesla owners Silicon Valley, and obviously they, they really ask so many great questions that are always on point, actually followed, followed up on this, and I can't talk anymore for some reason, I apologize for that, and said, wonder if Smart Summon and Reverse Summon will get a big update soon. And Musk clarified this pretty, pretty evidently. Okay, and said major update coming in a few months. Now, a few months is actually pretty good. I gotta say that really, that's not that far off at all. And I kind of don't really care if this is an update that is, you know, groundbreaking or earth shattering. Kind of doesn't really need to be. As long as this is a decent update that shows that Smart Summon and Reverse Summon are really still being prioritized in a significant way, then that's fantastic. Again, it's really a pretty untapped market, and it's something that Tesla has so much potential in. And it's something that, again, Elon Musk really seems to care about a lot. I think that's part of what's so exciting here, right? Is that he's, first of all, directly confirming this, that a major update is a few months out, which, again, I think is a really great thing. But at the same time, that this is still an integral part of full self-driving. It's not something that's, you know, far off in the future. It's not something that's 20, 30, 40 years down the line. It's something that could be right on the horizon, okay? Which is absolutely fantastic. And tell me what other companies are doing this, okay? Tell me what other companies are working on something like this that is, you know, really kind of out there, but also fantastic at the same time. Now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here because this is getting a little bit long. But thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, go ahead, drop it a like. Please do. It seriously helps out and it helps other people understand what's going on in the world of electric vehicles. Share with your friends. And uh, yeah, give me your thoughts. Is Smart Summon and Reverse Summon a feature that really still matters? I think it absolutely is, but I want to get your thoughts as well. Have a great one and goodbye.